Welcome back to the playlist on muscle physiology. This could be nervous system physiology. Uh, this video is going to be on something referred to as, it's called, if I can get my pen, it's going to be called the sodium potassium pump. Another name you can see this referred to is the sodium potassium ATPase. Why is it called the pump? Number one, well, it's the pump because it's going to essentially pump um, ions across the membrane, and the two ions that it's going to pump are going to be sodium and potassium. Okay, why is it also called an ATPase? Well, an ATPase in general is any enzyme that does a reaction where you take ATP, usually with water, and you hydrolyze it into adenosine diphosphate and inorganic phosphate. If you do that general reaction, you technically are classified as an ATPase. Okay, and in general, these are hydrolytic enzymes. Now, this reaction of the sodium potassium ATPase, in general, it's 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 very um, ubiquitous within all sorts of different tissues. Um, for the, the, the reason I made it first was for the purpose of muscle physiology, but we can also generalize this to, to neuron physiology as well. So I'm just going back to one of the previous, in fact, let me draw it here. Let me kind of draw our setup right here. So here's our membrane of whatever cell we're talking about. And, you know, in, in the previous video, what we talked about is we had these, these proteins in the membrane. We had these proteins. One of these was called a voltage-gated sodium channel. The other was called a voltage-gated potassium channel. Okay. And I think you have the intuition by now that what this protein, this one in blue does, the sodium channel, it pumps sodium from the extracellular fluid out here into the intracellular fluid or the cytosol. So what I have now is I have this situation where I have sodium ions in here, right? And I think you also have the intuition that during the repolarization phase of the action potential, depending on what we're talking about, this protein moved potassium out here into the extracellular fluid. So now I have a problem. The problem is, is that if I want to do any kind of other action potential, doesn't matter whether it's muscle or nerve, I have to start out with the sodium ions on the outside and the potassium ions that are out here now on the inside. So that's a little bit of a problem because the ions are in the wrong place. That's what the purpose of the sodium potassium pump is. So if I asked you what its purpose is, its purpose is to move the ions back to their starting positions so that I can do another action potential. That's its purpose. So we're going to go over a very, um, a very sort of um, primitive mechanism of the sodium potassium pump. So what I'm going to have essentially for the generic reaction, let's do the sodium potassium pump in purple. So this is the this is the sodium potassium pump. Okay. What it's going to do is it's going to take these three sodium ions, or three in general, and it's going to pump them out here back into the ECF. And then it's going to take two potassiums out here and pump them back into the cytosol. Okay, so it's going to it's only going to do two potassiums, but it's going to do three sodiums. Let's see how it's going to do that. So in this conformation, this is where we start out, number one. That's the point that we start out at. And it has a conformation such that three sodiums, one, two, and three, will kind of bind here in the sodium binding pockets. Okay, and so you see here in the second condition, they're already bound here. Now, what's going to happen in the second um, configuration is the ATPase action. So this reaction, remember we said is the ATPase. So this molecule right here, this is adenosine triphosphate or ATP. Well, it's going to bind here kind of at this position over here on the protein. And when it does, there's this there's, there's an amino acid called an aspartate. Usually we abbreviate that as ASP. Aspartate is an amino acid residue on the protein that's going to cleave off adenosine diphosphate, and this guy is going to float away with the remaining phosphate sort of attached there. Okay. As soon as ATP is hydrolyzed, what ends up happening is the protein changes conformation to where it's now open on the top. Notice how now it's open up here, and these three sodiums, they're now pumped out into the extracellular fluid. Because remember, out here, oops, let me go back, out here, 
Sorry about that. That's my Camtasia work studio. Anyways, here's the extracellular fluid out here. And notice, whenever the ATP is hydrolyzed, the protein changes conformation, and these sodiums just float out here into the extracellular fluid. Okay? And that's when ATP is hydrolyzed. Okay? So here's the first question that I can ask besides the one I already did. Um, what's the first ion that gets moved across? So you'd have to know, is it potassium or is it sodium? Well, you can see through this mechanism that as soon as ATP is hydrolyzed, it's sodium, the three of them, that are the first to move across. But see, now I'm still in this sort of open conformation where it's open to the ECF. Now, in that case, I'm going to have these potassiums that come in. Okay, and there are, in fact, two potassium binding sites right here. So potassium is going to come in into this conformation, number four, and it's going to assume right there. Well, essentially what's going to happen is there's a water molecule in here that's going to come in there, and it's going to hydrolyze off the phosphate. Okay, as soon as that phosphate is hydrolyzed off, there's another change in conformation, and these two potassiums get dumped out into the intracellular fluid. Remember in here is the ICF. So those potassiums get released by the sodium potassium pump and notice, notice what happens. If I go back here, notice that this shape, let me do it in blue, this shape right here of the sodium potassium pump, it's the same conformation that I started with. Right? So I start with this conformation where it's open to the inside of the cell. I go through a series of changes in conformation where I dump three sodiums out and put two potassiums in, and I end up with the exact same conformation that I started with. And that's, by definition, what a catalyst is. Catalysts have to be regenerated at the very end. And so now this is conformation six. And then I can, of course, you know, I can have three more sodiums that come in. I can have three more sodiums that come in, and I can just redo this cycle over and over again until I'm happy with the amount of sodiums I have on the outside and the amount of potassiums I have on the inside. And just keep in mind, it is dependent on adenosine triphosphate. It's dependent on the amount, amount of ATP that we have. So if you didn't have ATP, this process couldn't work because the sodium potassium pump is dependent on adenosine triphosphate. So hopefully this video gave you a little bit of intuition on how the sodium potassium pump works. Um, in the next video, we're going to go over some, some more muscle physiology on the more molecular level. See you then.